Hey guys, my name is William and I'm going to explain in this tutorial how to use variables in Xenoposter and what basically a variable is. Probably if you are familiar with programming you already understand what a variable is and how to use it. But anyway I would recommend you to spend a few minutes to watch this video and I'm sure you will find something useful for you. So basically variable is associated with a value it has. In programming you usually should specify a type as well of variables. For instance, if it's string, you should specify that it's string. In case it's number, you should also specify it. In Xenoposter you shouldn't specify any type of variables. And the same with a string, if you want it to be string, you just put there your text. Let's see how to initialize a variable in your project. There are two ways how to initialize a variable in Xenoposter. First of all, let's create a new project and then click the button all variables. We see a control with all variables specified in our project. It has a table with name and variable name and its value. We don't have right now own variables that we create by ourselves and we also don't have add variables. But you always have this list of um, environment variables but they don't have currently any value. But when we run the project and work with instance, with browser, these variables will have values. Also we have a tab with global variables, but I won't stop on global variables right now. It has some advanced things to explain, so I, st I start from basics, so we we'll just skip it. We can put a name of variable, for instance, let's name it just name. We can set a value. Also, you should know that uh, name of variable can be only can be only Latin characters and digitals. So now we have a variable, we have a value of it, so it's initialized. If you want it to use in your project, you have a macro and you can just copy it to clipboard by clicking this button. Okay. And for instance, we can show it in alert just connect in action, in action we start okay so we copy to clipboard and put it here well, there are some options here they're not so important right now we just leave it as default close it variables tab also can be closed right now let's save our project okay and we can run a debug to see how it works. Okay, you can see that the alert is opened with variable names that we specified. Okay, great. Look at other way how to initialize variables. In data categories there is uh, an action variable processing. Let's put it here. Click it twice and we, we see its settings. Okay, we can set value increase count and low count. Usually if you want initialize variable we use set value. Let's now use uh, digital because before we use string. Also you can specify string here but right now we'll set it to the uh, zero value so it's number. Let's call it counter. Other two actions should be done with number, like increase count and lower count. So you probably understand what it means. Um, increase count, you should specify what value should be added to our counter. For instance, if we put here 2, it means that our first value 0 initialized first to this value will be added 2, like 0 plus 2. And when you choose lower count, it means 0 minus value you specify here, for instance also 2. Ok, let's first increase count on 2, variable name will choose the same to operate on the same variable we specified. OK. Next we 
decrease our countdown one. Let me show an alert. Basically it was zero, then plus two, and then minus one. Okay, let's see first. Zero, increase two, so plus two, and then minus one. Okay, it's just to show you, I cut it. Now I won't use any other alert, I'll show you how to see the variable value during debug without showing it. Okay, let's see. There is variables control at the bottom of Project Maker. We see that the variable name already initialized. Yeah, we initialized it or variables tab and count are not initialized yet because we just on the first step of debug. Okay, we click next. So yes, counter initialized and it has zero value. Click next. And yes, plus two, it means it has value two right now. And minus one. So it is finally has value one. Click next and our debug is finished. Okay, you see that in variable processing we usually either initialize variable or we, we operate with number. But if you want to operate with text, you can use word processing action. If you don't want to copy it, you can write it. Just put V and you have Intel sense to choose what next, like I'm programming. It's very convenient. Just click dot and you can choose variables. We operate right now with name variable. Yeah. So you can operate with this text by using these actions. I'll show how to do that in a separate tutorial and right now we just close it and cut from our project. Okay, one more important thing of uh, using variables it's uh, using them in logic statements. I won't explain right now what logic statement is and for. I will just let you know that if you use text variable in logic statement you want to compare it with something. For instance, if uh, variable name is the same as uh, William, you see that I use quotes in the end and the beginning of the variable and the same with text. But with uh, number variables you don't need to use it. With counter you can do it like this. Okay? See no quotes with numbers but quotes are necessary if uh, variable is text. It's just JavaScript specific. Remember it when you use logic statements. Okay, thank you for watching. I will appreciate any feedbacks about this video. Bye.